Hey guys, Dream Games here again. This movie of Invincible was the strongest Viltrum Knight. Invincible is a, is a superhero series that's on. It was on Prime. It's a pretty good series. You also read the comics. Those are, in my opinion, even better. One thing makes him better is that Amber is not a cunt. That makes him so much better. So so much better. But uh, yeah. The season two came out yesterday, so I'm just kind of in honor of that. At least for me, they came out yesterday. But yeah. Or it came out yesterday, but yeah. Now, Invincible is the main character of the series. His name is Mark Grayson. His superhero name is Invincible. Even though he gets his shit kicked in, like, literally every fight. So, yeah. But he's only lost a few times. He's, I think he has a bit more wins under his belt, but that would not be surprising if he doesn't. Now, Mark is still born as son of Debbie and Nolan. Debbie being his mother, who's completely human, not a superhero, pretty sure she's a realtor. And Nolan... Who is his father is just like, well, he's Omni Man. He's the Viltrumite. And he's thousands of years old, but also I think his professional career outside of being Omni Man is him being an author. No one knows who he is because he doesn't show his face. He writes his, he writes his books anonymously. But yeah, the Mark will be born with his powers. He's not born with them, but he's born with his powers already showing signs. And no one can mention that Mark's. Pretty strong for a for a baby. And he's like, oh, it's just funny. No, no one's like, no, he is stronger than an average grown man. This is not an average child. <laughs> so immediately Debbie's like, oh, he's that kind of strong. Well, no, Mark's powers fully kicked in when he was when he was five months old. Physically, in terms of strength, he's pretty high up there. At the point where when he started started flying around, Debbie would just scream. Not a fear of joy. No, no one follows here. So he rushed down immediately. His suit halfway on, like he's like he's pulling his suit over his over his underwear and all that. Immediately he's like, like, what's going on? What's going on? Then he's looking at him, saying, "Oh, so, so sorry to worry you, honey, but uh, look." She even points at Mark above him, who's flying around or floating. But yeah, no one was surprised as he's like, "Oh, thank God." Wait, what? He reaches up for Mark, saying, "Those are my kids. When we can power this early, it takes us at least to we're ten or 15. Between that range, he immediately, immediately like, kind of just had his hand out, and as soon as he went to grab Mark, Mark would grab his finger. And no one's like, "Oh wow, this kid! I didn't know he was this strong yet." He's like, "He's at least as strong as like a, as, like a beginner, like a beginner to my warrior." He thinks that in his head, but suddenly Mark, Mark squeezes and throws him. Suddenly, no one is thrown to the roof, and he's thrown, in his opinion, about five miles back. No one hit the ground. Kind of on a rock as he just holds his, holds his back and he then starts coughing and heaving. He's saying, Damn it, he he he, he hung the wind out of me. He ends up just coughing even more. It says, That's not normal, normal strength. That is at least that's I underestimated his strength. And that might be at least at least a mid to high tier warrior. So, yeah. Now, Nolan does raise Mark a bit more strictly. The Debbie doesn't mind this because she doesn't know why, because Mark is a superpowered child. Now, Nolan himself would actually talk to Cecil. Not about, like, not about, like, your son having powers. No, it's more like, hey, can you enroll me in combat training? I'm already pretty skilled, but I don't want to know what martial arts this planet has to offer. Now, Cecil actually, well, does give Omni Man some martial arts training. And. Cecil, Cecil doesn't, doesn't take it weird that a superhero wants to know martial arts, especially when, like, Omni-Man, where martial arts would teach you control. So, yeah. So with this, Nolan ends up teaching Mark what he learns. So Nolan and Mark are both learning from this. By the time Mark, Mark is 10, he first goes to school, and at this point, in terms of physical power, like his speed and strength, those are all on par with Omni-Man. But his durability isn't there, so neither is like his men his mental abilities, like IQ, mental IQ, all that. That's not all there, but in terms of physical physicality, like physical strength and speed, Omni Man and not basically evenly matched. Point where Omni Man and him have like equally matched sparring matches sometimes. Like the point where because Mark is just m- more relying on his speed because he's smaller, he's a bit more agile, so he's a bit faster than Omni Man. So with this, him and Mark kind of just have like sometimes like, if you want to go like like ten out of ten times. It'd be like, when you go like 10 matches, Mark wins about four of those. Omni Man wins about, wins about, wins about, wins the, wins the other six. So, yeah. But by the time Mark is 10, he's, he starts going, he, he goes to school for the first time. He flies himself to school. Well, so he does try to like, when he flies himself to school, he just makes sure he, he makes sure he doesn't see, and he flies like a block away, then walks that one block to school. 
And Mark is on a few teams at school. Due to his control or power, he he, he prefers prefers to do track or wrestling. So yeah, he he does he does both. He makes time for both. So yeah. And one day while Mark's flying home, um, he has his hoodie on and all that, and he would see a battle on the freeway. He would see this girl in pink versus three deformed humans. Those are his words, deformed. And as he looks at them, he would he know no, this girl who spits out blood. She like, and she's just kind of just like coughing up blood as she's about to be be hit with a fatal attack. And then one of them, one of the deformed humans, had her had wrapped their arm around some rubble. And Mark notices this when he uses it as a club to keep the girl's head in. Mark immediately rushed down at top speeds, and he pulls his hood over his face, pulling the strings, making sure his face is unable to be seen. He slams right into the right into the humans, the formed humans, or the villains, and they're immediately killed by Mark. Probably not immediately, but they are pretty badly injured by Mark. Now Mark slid, kind of, kind of scraping the holes off his off his shoes, so that's the bottoms of them. And the girl in pink would ask him, "Who are you? I don't think I've ever heard of a hero my age." Mark just laughs and says, "Well, I'm." And then we, we get a, we get a title card that says, "Invincible." If I had a PC, I'd edit that in, but I don't. But yeah. Now Mark ends up helping the girl who calls herself Adam Eve, and she says these are her siblings. She didn't know them. she didn't know they existed until five minutes ago when they kicked her through through a car. Mark just says, "Well, well, 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 well you're pretty tough to be kicked through a car." And Mark's pretty easily helping her, like, just throw these guys around. She doesn't, she doesn't want to kill them, and Mark understands that. So, yeah. Once they're fully subdued, suddenly these this group of men, about ten of them, fully armed gear, fully armored, armored gear, bulletproof vests that are, happen to be fired and knife-proof, let's say that. Like, these are fully equipped soldiers. They aim their guns at Mark and Eve, and immediately Mark comes in front of Eve, clutching her tight, and letting the bullets hit him in the back. Eve's worried Mark's gonna die, but she realizes the bullets are kind of shattering on impact. But she doesn't notice that his clothes are being shredded as the bullets hit him. She just tells him, close your eyes, this is, this is going to be a, this is something, it's something really bright. He does, he does this told, and immediately she would basically make him make him his canonical yellow suit. Who, and then that yellow suit would cover his entire body. She uses his clothes to make it. So shoes, his shoes are kind of just back to normal, but they're now just kind of like a onesie now. When he looks at the suit, he's like, oh wow. He then he then kind of screams like kind of moving around, but still standing in front of Eve. And Eve says, the suit, the suit should be should be really really flexible, and it should be enough enough to stand the, stand the bullets for at least the next the next five minutes. Not it's not a timer. She's like, I'm not sure how durable it is, but I'd give it five minutes before it might might start, might start to be shredded. And Mark just smirked as he grabbed Eve and dashing around with dashing around with her in one arm, and he would basically just grab grab every every gun from the uh, from the army. And being basically beating them with their own guns. By the time he's done, the guns are basically bent and broken and dripping in blood. No one's dead, but they're just holding their holding their faces. So just like, no, please stop hitting me. And Mark does 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 as they ask, and he throws their guns into a pile. And Eve just transforms them into a, into a car for someone who had their car destroyed. Eve just says, "You should it should it should, it should, it should work the exact same. Just get in." And they do that and drive off. The gas is somehow in there. Now, Nolan does eventually arrive as he, as he would watch Mark. Watch Mark just being lecturing all the guys. As Eve patches herself up using bandages. He turns the bullets into bandages. But Omnian, Omnian would fly down as, as, as he looks at them. Two good heroes. Pretty interesting. A few other heroes who were happen to be having to be nearby would arrive. And they'd been praising Mark and Eve. Telling Eve that she was good for lasting this long, and that Mark did a good job coming in to save her at the last minute. Now, eventually, Omniman Omni looks, looks invincible, saying, "Hey, kid, let's, let's you know, let's talk." Mark even knows who this is. It's his dad. His dad has been Omniman for his whole life. So Mark just shoots off in, through the air. Omniman following him. And immediately, Mark just said, "No, no." Om, Omniman just sighs, saying, "Your mother's gonna kill me." Mark decides, saying, "Sorry, Dad. I, I, I just saw the saw saw saw, saw some troops in trouble, so I tried helping her." Nolan did pat his back, saying, "You know, no, no worries, kid. Just make sure that that if you're in a fight, just text us first or something. Like, you know, that you can move with speed of speed of sound. It would not be hard to just appear in front of your mom and say, "Hey, 
I'm gonna go fight crime and go back. She at least knows where you what you're doing. She wouldn't like it, but she knows what you're doing. It made Mark just laugh, just laugh a little bit. When they get home, they both get earful, earful from Debbie, but she's pretty impressed with Mark. And she's like, huh, well, your clothes are messed up, but that girl turned them into a suit. Mark just says, yes, yeah, it should be it should be really, really flexible. So it, 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 could, it could grow with me a little bit. He wasn't wrong. It would grow with him until he's about 13, where him and Eve were already kind of a dynamic duo. Adam, Eve, and Invincible. So, yeah. But at this point, by the time, by the time they're around 15, you know, Eve join, joins the teen team. But Mark doesn't. He refuses to. He doesn't like teams because Nolan doesn't like teams. Well, he, he, he doesn't seem to be even from different point of time. This is, in fact, his girlfriend. So, yeah. So, this. This by the time Mark is 15. He already has a blue suit because Eve is the one making his suits. And she, she's met Mark's parents. She's met Debbie, Debbie, Nolan, but also Art because Art could be a good reference for, like, how strong suits should be. It does improve. This does greatly improve Eve's suit. And it does give Mark Mark and Mark a new suit as well. So yeah. So, yeah, so Mark's blue suit is the one he has. But instead of it being like blue and black, you kinda see like the blue suit he, shirt he has right here, kind of that, but then he just pulls a mask over it, like the usual mask, and then you have that. So yeah. So yeah. Now now I'm gonna fast forward to the story canonically beginning. When Mark is seventeen, he's a globally known hero, since he's more social than Omni Man. I don't even know to save people, but he doesn't really, like, interact with them. Mark is kind of like Spider-Man. He has quips, he talks to people. He just doesn't really do that many team-ups, but I do think Spider-Man does like being on teams sometimes. The only difference between Mark and Spider-Man at this point is that the power set, and they're don't and they like for teams. Other than that, their personalities are both, are both, are both pretty bubbly. Either they're dating redheads, and yeah. But still. Um, yeah, Mark, Mark and Eve... Mark and Eve are dating, but Mark does have a pretty different physical, physical, sorry, somewhat different physical appearance. I guess height and weight would be a very big difference, but also so would his power. His height is around six foot four, but between Thag, not Thag, Thrag, and Omni Man. Omni Man, I believe, is six foot two, Thrag is six foot ten. So I'm putting Mark at a good six four. Because, well, he would have the power, power actually, no, greater power than Thrag, but he would still have. Same loyalty to Earth that Omni Man used to have. But this time, Mark's loyalty is permanent. So, yeah. There's not know who Thrag is. He is the strongest Viltrumite, but if you don't want to be spoiled, just don't go further into that. The background for this is spoiler enough. <laughs> but yeah. Then, um, in terms of weight, Thrag is about, like, I'd say Thrag is like high 200, maybe, maybe, maybe small 300s. Now, Omni Man's probably about, probably about mid 200, maybe 250. Mark's about 210. So, that's just a lot of muscle on him. That's kind of all it is. Move Mark's Lords. Mark and, Mark and Nolan both do when we tie. So, yeah, that's kind of something they do. It's, it's Nolan, Nolan uses it's the most intense. But Mark, like I said before, in terms of school sports, he does, does do wrestling. So, that's one thing he also does. So, yeah. So, Mark and Nolan kind of have the, have, the, have the same rogues gallery. So, yeah. But I would say one thing due to Nolan's harsher training on Mark when he's growing up, Mark isn't like against killing, but he does he doesn't he he'll kill if he views necessary. Like if someone's threatening to play blow, blow up the earth and nearly succeeds, he's killing them immediately. He views like if you if you live this, you can do it again and you may succeed. So your head your head's coming off at, right as I see you. It's gonna how Mark kind of views certain things. Like if he knows you're gonna be trouble, that he has to that he him, him personally has to step in again, he will kill you. If him and Nolan have stepped in more than twice, more than once or twice, dead. So, yeah. But I'm going go on to Mark's strength. At full power, Mark currently, like, he doesn't know his real capabilities, but from what he knows, if he goes all out, all out with a single punch, he can eradicate a single state. So, single state, would be, like, he, he can eradicate a state the size of, like, Texas and, well, and like, a full power punch from what he knows. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, like, oh, just atomize it from that punch. That'd be a different level of power. It'd be more like he can basically create an earthquake with a punch that would destroy it. So, yeah. Then his speed. He's about three times faster than, faster than light, which is not hard to believe in Invincible. It's just really, really impressive. Then his reaction speed is about six times faster than light. He's kind of just double his own speed in terms of reactions. At this point, he can already kind of do kind of just low, low diff Nolan. So, yeah. 
not only himself is already a lot stronger, but he still gets to get low diff by, 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 by Mark. <laughs> His durability is about large planet to, to multi-planetary. Like, it would take multi, multiple planetary attacks to just turn Mark's body into just a... How do I phrase this? Um, this is kind of a comic book spoiler, but it's coming up this season or next season. You know how, like, Conquest can put a hole through Mark? If Conquest were to try that, his arm would, would crumple into dust. Not dust, but it would just be, it would just be reverted to a very compressed, bony mass. If he, if he, if he tried to put his fist through Mark's chest. So, yeah. And the skill at this point is very much comparable to someone like Thrag, because all Mark does in his free time is just fight or train. Because he enjoys it. And Eve actually enjoys hanging out with Mark when he does that. I mean, Eve's update nights and stuff like that, but still. But, uh, yeah. Now, we're going to go on with the story. Eve is trying, 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 trying to convince Mark about, about once a month to join the team team. He doesn't really mind it, because him and Eve both do like talking about their hero work. So, yeah. But Eve is like, is like trying, trying to get him to be a member of the team team, but he always decla declines, saying, you know, she's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, you would be really strong. But Mark, 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 Mark Rebel is that they are too complacent. He, 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 he likes to, to explore and fight across the entire world. They like to fight and explore the state. And if they're lucky, the country. But nothing more than the United States, or specifically their state. I don't know where that is, Beyonce honest, I forgot. But Eve would just sigh, saying, you know, we could do more if someone, someone like you joined... And with how smart you are, you could become the leader. This Mark is about probably how smart as smart as Eve, maybe maybe a bit smarter. Because she is his tutor. So yeah. Him and like he's kind of Eve's everything and she's like his everything. Well, also sparring partner kind of for Mark is kind of just Eve and Nolan. And then sometimes sometimes the immortal, sometimes. But yeah. But yeah, Mark just shrugs saying, Yeah, I would I would I would love to train you all, but you know, if you guys kinda of handle villains, is that Barely threaten an average city. Well, I, I kind of handle villains and meteors that threaten the planet. He says, like, you know, also, you guys aren't, kind of aren't really hanging, hanging with my tier power. And he didn't, he knows that's a lie, lie in Eve's case. But she just, she gave him, like, a serious look saying, your tier, what, what are you, a video game character? We can grow up very quick. But before she didn't say quickly, suddenly Eve was cut off by an explosion. Well, she got ready to suit up, but even before her cloak, like, her suit was even fully on... Mark was Mark, Mark was already fully, fully suited up and just said dibs, because he knew that he knows that he was supposed to keep up to get an earful from Eve. He started off at, at top speed. Eve just says that he has to quit doing that because we, almost every time he does it, she has to make sure he puts him in a bubble so he doesn't so he doesn't so he doesn't, doesn't, doesn't destroy the city block. So yeah, he flew around into an entire city block that was decimated. But Mark 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 was confused. There's blood in everywhere in one single spot, but he doesn't really see any bodies near that single spot. But also, not like a bomb was planted. It, he even flew around, putting he flew around as, as fast as he could, it, putting up rubble in, in an organized pile. But also, also he would grab a tarp from a nearby convenience store, leaving money on the counter before they even noticed him take it. He would use a tarp to cover up as many corpses as he could as he put them all in one place. Then anyone who was injured, they were put in this in a certain place somewhere else. And the ambulance sent thank Mark, thank Mark for doing that. So, yeah. Now, Vincent Vince would be looking around, moving, moving around the, the bloody spots. He's like, the blood's drying up quickly, so I don't think they'll care too much. He's moving around, he's like, there's no way there's a bomb planted somewhere. The bomb went off here, but where, where would it be planted? He's like, there's an idea that someone kind of probably, probably, probably blew themselves up. Which he finds it hard to hard to believe that someone would do this. And plus, if a bomb bomb did, how did it eradicate a person to the point where there's only blood left of them? No bones, no flesh, just blood. As Mark is looking around, and he would hear someone just say, "What happened here?" We immediately, immediately we see we see War Woman and Green Ghost. They must appear, and the rest of the Guardians of the Globe follow behind. Well, War Woman looks at looks at and someone says, "Oh, hey." They've been talking for a little for a little bit, as everyone else began investigating as much as they can. No one kind of sitting sitting on like like just a bunch of pile of bricks and says, "A bomb." Mark shrugs, saying, "Well, it looks like it, but I'm not sure." And as I, as I look around, well, Iron Man decided to fly away. He wasn't really having any interest in this. But as he flew off, about five five minutes later, Mark got a text. 
It was from his dad. It said, attack at White House. And then immediately, you like, Ron Mark's like, who? And Nolan, Nolan sent a picture looking like a selfie with like with like one of the Mahler brothers. He's about to punch him in the face. And Mark immediately, immediately kind of put it together. As he's fought them more than once. And the thing is, he, he someone tries to kill them, Cecil intervenes. Which Mark also, also does not like Cecil, because Cecil stopped him from, 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 from killing a few villains, because Cecil views them as useful in the future. But immediately Miss Wood just yell, saying, It's a distraction, get to the White House. The distraction being that, due to Mark already, already handling the Mauler brothers, they attacked the main city he usually frequents. They kind of did a very similar thing to what Batman does to like to Clark Kent in like um, I think it was the animated series, not like, not like like the Brave and the Bold. It was like Batman has to like get hair down. Like very, very, I'll find it real quick. Yeah, it was like this one where Batman had tracked Superman using like using like like just data recorded over satellite that tracked anything over moving over the speed of sound. But uh, yeah. Now. Um, that, no, not Batman. Invincible, Invincible would, would, go, would go to the White House as he, as he, as he would grab, a, grab Aquarius and fly him over while the immortal and war woman handled Darkwing Green Ghost. Red Rush just ran there, but, yeah. <laughs> as soon as they got, they got to the White House, Invincible would land and throw Aquarius at, uh, at one of the Mauler brothers. Aquarius would just tackle him and immediately begin basically just blasting him with water, holding him down, kind of just waterboarding him, but very much closer with higher pressure. In fact, stripping tri- 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 some skin off his face. And Green Ghost would notice him trying to, trying to like just grab Aquarius' hand, and she knows that due to how physically strong they were, Aquarius would have his arm torn off or broken, maybe even worse if they got close enough. So she would go, go from under the ground and grab, grab a, the brother, basing him underground, but at its elbows, making it harder for him to move his arms. This allows Aquarius to simply just wait he wail on him for a bit until he's just unconscious. The last brother was just, was just handled by by, by Invincible and and in, in the Immortal, who kind of just go like, you go low, I go high. So with a simple clothesline from Mark, and then just a shoulder tackle at the knees from the Immortal, well, the other brother, brother was down in seconds. Not really brothers, but the Mahler twins. That's kind of what they are, so yeah. Warwoman and Omni Man and Darkwing Crumb were kind of just making sure everyone's okay and throwing throwing away the tech, but also saving civilians. So yeah. <sighs> now Miss Invincible would just notice like you know all right, we're done. So he he and the will make see Eve. At this point it's about seven in the morning and he has school in thirty minutes. He flies back he flies back back over to Eve. When he lands, Eve is holding up clothes for him. But she says. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, gotta, gotta leave your stuff at my house. He gives, gives me, gives me too many, too many lectures and too many, too many weeks grounded. It doesn't work, but I'm still grounded. Mark kind of just turned red, knowing, knowing why he leaves his clothes there. It's for certain actions that they does with Eve. But he just says, sorry. But he, he puts his clothes on, kind of like how Flash just spins and he puts his clothes on. And, and puts his suit on. Mark kind of just does that. Just because he's really fast. So yeah. In that school, Mark is kind of being chilled and being his, his usual self until Todd would try bullying Mark, which he's never tried before. Todd tries smacking, tries smacking Mark's books out of his hand, but all Todd does is give his hand a really big red mark. And he says, oh, damn it! Mark just chuckles and says, you want to go and try, try kicking, kicking them out of my hand? Todd does try it, but Mark immediately just moves his books, uses his other hand, grabs Todd's foot, and yanks him forward. Making Todd just kind of just Fall hit the ground, hitting his head on the ground a little bit, giving him just a bit of a headache. Now Mark and the class with William and Eve, and eventually later that day, Mark and Eve began training with Nolan. Nolan, Nolan wanted to see how strong Eve was, and she, he does know that Eve is really fast when it comes to flying, almost as fast as she, almost as fast as he is. Due to Nolan being a bit buffed compared to Cannon. I'd say Eve's probably as fast as canonical Omni Man in terms of flying, but she has to use like a barrier around her so she doesn't, she doesn't hurt herself doing it. So yeah, but just a small, small um, rundown of events. Mark, Mark and Eve go, Mark and Eve, Eve go go to school. Omni Man kills the, uh, the the GOG, the Guardians of the Globe. Mark is a bit more heavily involved in that, but yeah. This time Omni Man is like not only like coma, but he's like he's bedridden. So yeah. He doesn't know who did it. All he knows is that he was hit really fast, a ton. 
And Mark does know that Omni Man's speed is kind of his only weakness. Those so when someone hits him fast enough, like Red Rush, it's very possible. But then also Mark thinks, Red Rush is an idiot. He wouldn't attack Omni Man. The Guardians of the Globe, they kind of like him. They consider him part of the team. And then Mark has an idea has an idea with Cecil, like, can someone copy powers? Because like the only person you can think of that's faster than Omni Man would be him or Red Rush. And immediately, immediately Cecil's like, Yeah, I can I can see that. I can see that's possible. So with this, we go on probably just to Mark and Cecil working together to solve who did it, who did it, not knowing it was Nolan. But yeah. But now we now we go on to the Flaxen part, where we would see the team team and Mark being introduced to each other. Mark's, Mark, Mark's only met Robot, but that's because he was with Cecil at the time. But Mark, Mark will even assume that he was closer to joining, but Mark would actually genuinely not want to join because of Rex now. That's another reason he doesn't want to join. First, it's power. Now it's because now, now of Rex. Rex. Now, Mark, Mark doesn't end up leaving. And Eve doesn't understand why, why Mark is leaving now, but she just smacked Rex in the back of the head, calling him an idiot, saying, Damn it, Rex, you know. He was, he was finally, finally, finally getting close to wanting to join us. But he had to be an annoying asshole. Rex just shrugged, as he was end up pulling a beer out of, out of the fridge. He's like, who cares? He's probably, 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 probably going to hold us back anyway. He, he didn't seem too smart or strong. The robot, ro- 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 robot approaches, as he's grabbing, grabbing the beer from Rex, throwing it in the trash. Well, one, I'm not, I'm not condoning underage drinking, because, yeah. What he says. Quite the opposite, actually. According to Cecil, well... He's the only man capable of defeating Omni Man and the Guardians. Well, the former Guardians, sadly. Amy Lee, well, not using like former Guardians, sadly, says, he says he's the only man capable of defeating, defeating Omni Man and the Guardians. In his head, he just thinks, well, form, form, former Guardians, sadly. Because Cecil knows this because, well, Mark does like to do his own horn as he makes jokes of being stronger than Omni Man, but Cecil has she said he spied on them and he knows that Mark is stronger now. So, yeah. Now Rex does like spit out his beer and du- duplicate the shot of look at Eve. And, and you know, they kind of make a joke saying that Eve is banging God, so to say. That's, they're not wrong, but they're not right for it. Now Eve does like kind of, kind of just lecture Rex until they all hear a loud explosion, again, but also gunfire accompanied by the explosion. They the, the, the rest of the scene as they, see, as they see tons of injured flaxons, or dead ones even, as they just look at Mark, who's standing in front of an old lady, he, as gunfire kind of bounces off his body, even Keenan fires being smacked back at the tanks. Mark, Mark ends up noticing, noticing them arrive, and simply looks, just, just looks at Duplicate, saying, Get your duplicates, oh, duplicates over here, and eventually this old lady, she's, she, she has a small, like, gunshot injury, so you need to help her walk. And they agree. So, yeah. The Invincible would immediately spot the leader of the Flaxons, and he would basically just hover up on one foot, dash forward, and immediately grab the leader out of the neck and fly through hordes of flaxons. Mark ends up appearing in the portal, portal with a lot of flaxons behind him. Even Rex finishes off the flaxons, but as soon as Eve goes to like grab Mark to get out of the portal, the portal closes. Now immediately, immediately, well, he looks, he looks just around, and he's like, "Huh, this is your planet, right?" Flaxon just speaks. The leader kind of just speaks like incomprehensible language to Mark. But Mark all he does is just well pick up the flaxen and with both hands and just tear him tears him in half. In Mark decides as as he throws those both halves of the leader to the leader to the ground, flies him in the air, and just sighs. Horty takes off his mask. Then everyone sees the very pissed expression that Mark's that Mark has, and he says, First you kill innocent people. You blow blow up buildings that that help our city. I'm done. I'm just done. Mark, Mark flies down, bowl, bowl both fists out, and he locks a new trunk he didn't know he had. At the moment he, he can actually the planet, he blows up almost an entire country's worth of raw surface. Mark was even going all about that time, he just knows he wanted to hit them hard. As soon as the entire well, country-sized mass is gone, he flies around more, doing, kind of doing, doing what Nolan did, but faster. To the most of Nolan two days, took Mark 12 hours. Immediately, the scientists had gathered all they could, using some tech they had remaining, and they opened the portal. But this time, as soon as, as, soon as Mark was almost done, he flew around as fast as he could, going going now up to the four times faster than light, and before the portal closed because he destroyed 
some tech, he flies through it, and only having a bit of his cape cut off. Not cape, probably just a bit of a suit, but I don't know if I said cape. But yeah, when he returns, returns, he returns to the battlefield, and this is being cleaned up. Immediately, he just bows to the people who said, like, whoa, it's invincible. And they notice that he has, like, he has, like, a small mustache growing. And Eve had arrived there, she heard, like, the, the like, the, yeah, go invincible. She arrived, like, with the mark, before you, she, before you even said, like, oh, hey, sorry, I scared you. She was like, ew, your mustache is ugly. She didn't use her power just to burn it off. As Mark Mar- holds it on his face, saying, it took him forever to grow that. Eve just says, still, it's kind of gross. So, yeah. Eventually he goes home, his mom's like, oh, hey honey. He says, he says, he says hi, and then he then he walks, he walks in. His dad's like, oh, well, how, how was it? Like, how long, like, they seem to be aging. How long were you in there? Mark says, I don't know, well, I, I grew a mustache. And, and no one says, where is it? He says, he didn't like it, she burned it off. And that kind of just made, just made no one laugh a little bit. So, yeah. But eventually he comes on to Alan the alien, and Nolan tells Mark to fight him. No, Mark does fly, does fly up to Alan, and, well, as they fight, Mark does, does notice that, like, Alan's not, not really a threat. One, because he's so weak compared to Mark, but also, his punches don't have all the power into it. And Mark kind of just thinks to himself, like, wow, is this guy really not, like, a threat? Is this, like, is he, like, sparring? And, and Mark actually just kind of tries to say out loud, like, you know, you could have landed some decent blows if you went all out. Alan just laughed and landed a really strong haymaker to Mark. Mark ends up looking at his lip, seeing this is a very small cut. Mark ends up looking at his lips. Oops. And he says, he says, hmm, not that's what he thinks. Oh, I, I, I bled a bit. And, and, well, immediately, Alan says, yeah, you're right. I'm not going all out. And yeah, it's kind of like sparring. It keeps me on my, we can say on my toes. Alan just punched clean through the moon. He's on the other side of the moon. He looks through the hole and he's like, I can't even see that far. But suddenly, as soon as he tries to look away, Mark flies through the hole he made through with Alan's body, grabbing Alan by the face and then squeezing. Immediately, immediately Alan tries like, tries like just like, just spitting out blood. Like into Mark's face because he was, he was hit really hard. But he spits blood on Mark's hands and Mark just keeps squeezing, telling him, He'll squeeze until his skull is, is just, until his, hand, until his head is just a ball of flesh, or he passes out, or he submits. But Alan just smirks, and as he begins growing, his muscles seem to be just puffing up a little bit. He's barely able to, able to get Mark's hand off of him, and using his other hand, he can just quickly, quickly just moves out of the way, punching Mark into the moon. No, 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 doing any damage, but still, he hit Mark hard. Mark does notice that, like, you know, Alan is hitting harder. And with this, they fight for about an hour. Mark not holding on, not, not holding back. Or, you know, he would be holding back. But still, he does, he does note that Alan's growing really fast. Point where Alan does note that Mark is growing with him, but Mark is only growing as strong as Alan gets. He's not moving faster, he's moving at the same speed as Alan. He's not getting stronger, he's hitting Alan with the same amount of force. So, yeah. I mean, Mark isn't controlling his, his, his durability. So, yeah, because Mark is already just way too durable. So, yeah. But eventually, eventually, Alan, Alan claps in the moon, and Mark just grabs a space rock, sitting on it, and takes off, takes off his mask. You know, with this, he does have to like, hold his breath, but Alan had already been using telepathy to talk, so, yeah. But as they talk, Alan's like, wow, that guy was a lot easier to fight, but after this, that, 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 may have, that, that, that probably will let me get, get ahead of him. And Alan, Alan just knows that Mark has like a light bulb moment, so Mark thinks, like, oh, you grow stronger as you fight. That's why you kept hitting me so hard each time. Each time I hit you back. And I was like, oh yeah, you figured it out. Even though the, even the other guy I didn't figure it out like a second fight. Mark's like, oh yeah, I can, I can kind, of, kind of tell you kept getting muscular every time I hit you. And I was like, yeah, f- 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 you think this is like a dead give- giveaway. Mark and him kind of just laugh at how dumb Nolan was for that. Until, until Nolan arrived saying, the fight ended and the fight, the fight took too long. What's going on? Then Mark mentioned... Alan's power, and Alan's, and Alan, and Alan, like, you let him grow? Mark's like, yeah, it was, a, it was a fun fight. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure he got ahead of you. I'm not surprised, like, he got ahead of me in an hour against you. Mark just not saying, eh, probably, 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 like, like, 40 minutes ago, but still. So it took, it took Alan, Alan 20 minutes that to get ahead of Omni-Man, but Mark, 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 Mark was still stronger than him by that much. Give, 
give I don't know, like a good hour and a half, then he'll probably get to Mark's level. But yeah, he has, he has to fight on him for an hour and a half, not Mark. But yeah. But eventually, Nolan does just fly away. And Alan says, alright, good thing Urath has, 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 has some good, good, good protectors. Mark, Mark just gives him a very, like, like confused look, like, Urath, what's that? If you think, think Earth, yeah, it's pronounced, it's pronounced Earth, you know, E-A-R-T-H. Hold on, is that, said Earth, I'm gonna trigger that right. Yeah, E-A-R-T-H. I'm very insecure about my spelling. But yeah. You know what this sounds like? No. Urath, you know. U R A T H. Urath. And then Mar- Mar- Mar's like, nope, this is Earth. Alan pulls up his pad, look at it, and Mark Mar- Mar- Mar points out the countries, the continents that are missing. He's like, no Africa, no Antarctica. He points it out. I don't think that's accurate, accurate but still. Immediately, Alan looks up, saying, "Oh, you're right. Uh, let's hope Urath still exists." He just shoots off into space, yelling like goodbye to Mark. Mark, Mark, Mark puts on his mask again and just kind of just slowly, slowly levitates back down to back down to Earth. He lands and Eve, Eve repairs his suit, and Mark spends one movement filled night with Eve. And with this, I'm going to end this part here. If you guys want more of this, well, tell me. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed. Again, subscribe for more. Adios.